Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this small power extension cord that you can control from your mobile phone through Wi-Fi. This small tutorial assumes a bit of programming knowledge and some basic knowledge about Arduino, microcontrollers and really basic electronics. Given that on this project we'll be handling electricity, please make sure you know what you're doing if you want to follow this tutorial. If you have any doubts, make sure you ask someone that can help you. We're going to be using the ESP8266 microcontroller and one of these two relays. This black solid state relay is a silent one but only handles about 2 amps at 250 volts. While this other blue relay is noisy, makes a click sound each time you turn it on and off, but handles up to 10 amps at 250 volts. This is the extender unit that I'll be using for this project. I'm also going to tear down and use the circuitry of one old Samsung mobile charger that I no longer use so that I can provide power for my low voltage setup. After setup I'm checking if uh, this works and provides the correct voltage. On the power extension unit I have removed one of the posts and I will also keep the button to allow turning on or off the whole thing. The room I made should offer sufficient space to host the components I need to place inside. Of course, some of the other connectors inside need a bit of tweaking, so I've also worked on cutting them to size. I preferred using a Dremel because this metal construction has rivets and I did not want to risk uh, loosening them if I were to use some pliers or something like that. But do be careful when cutting. In my case, applying too much pressure led to the flexible metal blade to snap back and break the cutting sheet. Depending on what kind of power extension you find, you will have more or less work to do at this stage. And now we'll talk a little bit about the code. Uh, I'm using Arduino 188. You can download any kind of version you have currently available. It should act quite the same. Uh, first of all, I sh I'm not taking credit for this code. This code actually belongs to uh, these guys right here, lastminuteengineers.com. And basically what I did was uh, to go to this uh, projects page and the code that I basically changed is this one. So you have this uh, interface right here and uh, these guys are basically turning off and on some LEDs. Uh, so uh, yeah, you'll see the code right here. Uh, okay, so let's just go about the code right now. Uh, first of all, if you don't have any experience with this, uh, just follow my uh, explanations slowly. You don't really need to do anything else but just copy-paste this. Uh, well, n not in this case because I'm not going to copy this code in the description. I'll, I'll simply show it to you because you really need to type it in yourself. It's easier to, to, to control it this way. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you some uh, interesting stuff. So when you start one of these sketches, uh, this is what gets uh, compiled and uploaded to your uh, microcontroller. Uh, this has two methods, one setup method and one loop method. Uh, this gets executed and ran only once at the beginning of the execution for the microcontroller. Typically that happens when uh, you plug in your microcontroller uh, or when you reset it. So. Uh, also, this should read uh, before anything else, even on power on or reset. Yeah, and this, as I said, this one runs once. So everything you put here is uh, run uh, at init initialization. And then immediately you go to this loop right here, where, of course, you... Uh, put your code and this will run, run, run and start over again until something happens and uh, your microcontroller explodes or anything else. So uh, this of course runs after setup has ran once. So you should keep this in mind. These are the most important things you will have in your code. The rest of them, as I'm going to show you, are just other methods that we call from these main methods. There we go, we have the setup and we have the loop right here. But let's start with the declarations and inclusions. Um, this is the declaration part. What that basically means that is that you define some stuff, you know. You define 
uh, um, SSID and password for your Wi-Fi that you're about to put on your um, microcontroller. Uh, these are some local variables. This is the port that the microcontroller will uh, output to. Uh, this is just a flag. Uh, uh, yeah, just a flag because um, as this relay works, uh, it takes zero to mark that the relay is on and one to mark that the relay is off. This is how this uh, board, the relay board works. And I found that counterintuitive, so I kind of hide it uh, behind the variable. That's not big deal. You don't have to worry about that. Basically, you also type this in. So uh, also, in order for uh, these guys to work right here, these define your IP address that you're going to use your mobile phone to connect to uh, and some other settings you really don't care but they have to be there uh, and all these guys need these two guys to be typed in so first thing you should do is type this stuff in this is the uh, inclusion and declaration part of your code uh, so this one I think I missed selecting it and now you start this is the setup stage so uh, this runs once you start by setting the uh, relay status as off uh, and then you set the pin mode for the pin that w is going to be used to communicate with the uh, with the uh, relay to output because you're going to output to it. You're not going to take input from that pin. You're going to set it to uh, to accept your uh, commands from your code. So this means it's an output pin. Okay, we initialize the Wi-Fi. This is a method that's defined below uh, here. In fact. So, when the code calls this, it actually goes here, runs everything here. This, again, is some stuff saying that uh, we need to, this Wi-Fi needs to have this uh, access point with this SSID and password that are defined above. Uh, the configuration with the stuff that I told you not to worry about, you just put that in and you're done. And also, server uh, on slash this means when you access this IP and it actually in in your browser wherever you call it from it's something like uh, I'll just mess up my code it's like HTTP uh -huh, uh, for one and a slash so this sorry this right here is the slash that is being referred here so when you type this one on your mobile browser you will Ac uh, actually access this after this so we'll just go ahead and erase that so of course after the IP comes the slash which means it's the root of everything else and we say whenever the user accesses this go to this method which is defined below whenever he's accessing slash relay on go to this method which is also defined below and whenever the user tries to uh, set the relay off handle this method which is again defined below when not found handle not found another method that handles not found and says hey I couldn't find the stuff you know the 404 error maybe you are familiar again details that you're not really keen to know if you don't want to know them so uh, what happens when handle relay on is called um, oh uh, let me finish about this one okay so we define all this stuff right here we don't need this stuff uh, we mark server to begin. This is on initialization. Again, let's not forget we do this once and then we're done. We do this only once. So now the server will listen to all these queries if they exist. And each time either of these is, uh, is, is called, we move to the respective uh, method that will effectively handle our query. Okay, let's see. We started from, we, we finished with this one. Show signal initialization complete. That is some fancy stuff I did myself. To be honest, you can actually completely skip it. I'll show you the definition of it uh, below, which is right here. What I do basically after everything is initialized, I just click and clack the relay for an uh, audio confirmation that uh, the server has started. This actually I did just to help me understand uh, when 
the microcontroller actually works uh, in, and it initializes properly. You can skip that altogether. As far as I'm concerned and you're concerned, you can delete this and also delete uh, this line from uh, the setup uh, method and your code is even smaller. You don't need that. But yeah, if you want to use it, fine. Now, the loop. After this has uh, finished, you'll go into the loop, which is, of course, as the name says, a loop that continuously runs. And we have the handle thing here of the server that basically says, hey, is there anything uh, happening? Is there anything happening? Is there anything happening? And this also connects to this because the server says, hey, something did happen. Uh, the guy said, let's turn the relay on. And then we go to this method. So this, is, this goes on here. On each loop, the server checks this set of rules right here um, and what does this do uh, if yeah uh, and these guys handle relay on basically change this flag we say uh, uh, it's counterintuitive here I don't know why I say off but never mind that just copy paste the text and then you can do a debug after uh, basically I change the flag according accordingly and then I update the relay right here. Oh, I remember why I did this stuff. Uh, when the relay on, I set it off. It's because somehow it works uh, inversely. I I didn't I I didn't really understand why, but I have to do it this way. So uh, yeah, if you have the patience to debug it, you can debug it. But basically, this is the way it works. When you actually uh, relay on, you have to set it to off. You can't just change the zeros and ones here because you have some other side effects. I don't know. I just I had an issue with that. I didn't uh, really fix it in uh, other ways. So yeah. Uh, so after you handle all this stuff uh, from the handle client method, then it says it checks what's the status of the flag, and then digitally writes to the relay port, which is set to output the uh, the state that the relay has to be in. So this is the actual part where um, everything uh, gets set in uh, the mechanical uh, at the mechanical uh, stage. Okay, uh, let's see. Handle relay on also has another very important uh, aspect. Actually, all these methods they do a send because. Uh, we need to have the HTML that shows the page I've um, presented earlier. Uh, hang on, let me... Yeah, this page, of course, mine looks a bit different. I don't have two buttons, I only have one button. Uh, but this actually is a web page, and the source of this page is, uh, is right here, in fact, in the send HTML, HTML uh, method. So, this method takes the state of the relay and uh, generates the HTML for the user. The only change from uh, relay off and on is that it shows different texts uh, on whether the relay is on or off. And uh, also we have a button somewhere. We should have a button. There we go. We have a button right here. And this button should have a behavior. I, I don't see it. I'm blind. I don't know why class button okay so again uh, class button button off relay off so this is the key point that connects the stuff whenever the user clicks this button he automatically makes the re this request the slash relay off which we find right here so this is how it works the user clicks on that button makes that request and then the server responds to the request so everything should be uh, clear with this. Well, I know it doesn't look very clear, but basically just type this one in. Make sure you type the code correctly and uh, just have the knowledge that this is some HTML with some styling on it and you really don't have to bother with it too much. You might even have some knowledge about HTML and you know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, you don't need this, so don't worry about it. Okay, so I think I've explained the code. I will be, uh, I will be nasty and not copy-paste this code. I would like you to try and type it on your own, 
because uh, yeah, it's it's better than actually copy pasting uh, stuff up and not knowing what's happening. So uh, yeah, this is the code. Okay, so the wiring is also pretty simple. Uh, basically, you have the uh, microcontroller, uh, and this guy has a few ports on it. You will basically have, let's say, port uh, D0. This is the one that I'm using. Uh, you'll also have uh, ground. Of course, I think it's somewhere around here. Okay, you will have a 5-volt port and a 3.3 pin a volt pin right here so uh, you need to provide power to this by uh, the uh, unit I've disassembled the Samsung phone charger that takes uh, uh, the power grid 220 volts and provides uh, ground and plus 5 volts. So basically what you need to do is take this one and put it here. Take this one and yeah, of course, you put this one here. Sorry for the drawing, I hope it still remains clear. So that provides power to the whole uh, setup, well, almost uh, the whole setup because you also have the relay right here. And the relay typically has a uh, VCC port. Uh, it has a ground port. And the uh, input, which basically uh, takes the signal. Now this is easy. The input goes to this pin right here, the D0 pin, uh, that itself acts like an, uh, like an output and becomes the input for this one. But also this thing needs to be powered, so the ground also goes here and the VCC comes from the 3.3 volts right here. And that is your entire setup. Of course, if you have a button on uh, your power extension, uh, you will have it, let's say, around here. This goes to the wall socket and then you will have your power inside, um, sorry, on these pins. And when you turn them on, you will have the power directly to your um, charger that now acts as the power source for your setup. So make sure you put this after the button, not before, because you want to be able to turn this off. If you don't have the power button, you can well skip this step, but bear in mind that you will constantly keep this uh, under power if you keep it uh, plugged in. Oh, almost forgetting one very important thing. Of course, we've missed something from uh, from our sketch right here, and that is the actual ports on the relay that handle the um, the contacts, the bridge. Uh, between the current and what you get on your post. So basically this relay has three ports. Uh, we have COM port uh, and then you have two options. You have normal connected and normal open. Uh, what does this mean is that in one state, the default state, this is closed, that is uh, this is short, uh, it's a connection between these two pins and this is open. When that state reverts to the other uh, one, which is uh, maybe open or closed, depending on which one is it, uh, this gets inverse. So this will be closed and this will be open. Uh, depending on what you need, you will have to set up your uh, ports right, uh, right here. I basically put the normal closed uh, because I want power to exist the first time I turn on the relay and I want to be able to shut it off afterwards, not the other way around. So what happens is that, uh, let's just let's just draw them. Uh, we have a normal open, uh, we have the uh, COM, they call it COM, I don't like, it sounds like communication, but whatever. And you have the normal closed. So the same power you have here also goes to the posts. I'll just, all them like this. Let's let's pretend there are three of them, right? And normally what happens is that this other one goes and 
also powers the uh, the phase. Let's say this is the null, and this is the phase. I don't know in English, it might be a P. I don't know. Uh, in our case, however, we'll just do a little detour to this one and continue on from this other one right here. So what will happen is that this doesn't get power unless the relay is in a state that allows this connection. If you change the state, this breaks and you will only have the null but not the uh, the phase. So that will not, not, uh, not be in. This is how you turn on and off your posts. So there you have it. I tried to make this tutorial as clear as I could, but please use the comment section below to ask any questions or if I explain something wrong. And please do that especially when you aren't sure about something in this tutorial. I welcome critique and advice, so please go ahead. Thank you for watching and please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my enthusiast projects in the future. Thank you and good luck!